Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass Grab Bag, your weekly podcast reviewing games from the Game Pass Collection, bringing you three unique perspectives from varying skill range. I am the guardian of this grove, Andrew. With me, our juicy great, our returning guest, my brother, Aaron. Hey. And with us, of course, our maraschino cherry, Liz. Hey, guys. And this week, we played Garden Story. Did you have to look that up? Just I feel like you had to look I, that I, one I, up. I, I couldn't remember if it was the Garden Story or a Garden Story. It's just Garden you Story. You couldn't remember if this was Mass Effect or the Garden Story. <laughs> they, I could see why you'd be confused. <laughs> but Garden Story is brought to you by Picogram, if I said that correctly. Uh, and Garden Story is a top-down action adventure role-playing game where you are playing a fresh young grape named Concord who has been chosen to help save the grove. You graduate from the kindergarten and have to essentially pick up the mantle of the guardian and try to save the citizens of this ancient dying tree going around though liz was this a game or a pass for you it was a game for me i kind of thought it was a little bit slow there's something about it that i just kind of wanted it to pick up a little bit but overall i really liked it and um we had a busy week so i didn't get to put as many hours as i'd like to because it was kind of addicting and i kind of wish i i had the time to beat the game what about you aaron uh, again, thank you for having me as a guest this week. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I don't take this, I don't take this lightly. I take this with great honor. Um, and so I'm going to crap all over that and say, this game was awful. I hated it. This is a hard pass. Really? For me. <laughs> really? Uh, I'm gonna, I can't tell if you're joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> I am not joking. Wait, you struggled with Stardew. Oh. Thank you. Yes, I was. I was eventually going to get oh, to that point. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> I will. I was gonna. I wasn't gonna add any nuance to this, but I will add a little nuance. Uh, this game is just not for me. Just period. It's not my type of game. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad that you mentioned Stardew because I was gonna make a comparison to Stardew and why Stardew was frustrating to me. A lot of the similarities here as to why this was frustrating for me as well. So um, it's a hard pass for me. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so for me, this was a game for me. Actually, I, I was getting close to actually making this a definite game. I had a lot of fun with Garden Story. Um, you know, it's very reminiscent of like, you know, old school Zelda games where you just kind of start off something simple and small and kind of progressively go on. I will say the name to me was very confusing because when I first saw this, I was like, oh, is this like Stardew Valley? Stardew Valley, are you playing, you know, this fruit and you're creating a farm? Not really. You, there is some gardening going on, but what I loved about this game was that it just, it started off very slow. I do agree with you, Liz. I think this game starts off very slow, but it literally keeps throwing in these new mechanics here and there. And it was just growing and growing and more for me. And I was actually having a ton of fun with this game. Did it's you not- have low expectations? Because I feel like talking to you early, you seemed surprised. And I, seemed I had very like, low expectations. Yeah. And you were like gushing about the game. So I feel like because you went into it with low expectations that maybe that's why. You the first so. like 15 minutes, like. I didn't want to play this game. I started playing. I'm like, this is boring. I was like, I'm good. Cause also too, I wasn't, I didn't have much expectations too, because the download size of this game is not even a gig big. Like it looks like it's tiny, but there, it, this game's like 10 hours to beat. And you know, this game originally was on the Nintendo switch and it's gotten high praise from Nintendo switch. Uh, apparently not from Aaron, but uh, Man, you're, you're, hit, you're hitting <laughs> on some of my future points here, but, uh, okay. uh, but, well, but I, uh, <laughs> I had low expectations, and this absolutely met those expectations with flying colors. Um, <laughs> and it's not to say, it's not to say again that this is a bad game. I'm sure. Again, I'm not surprised that Andrew would fall on literally the polar opposite of this spectrum. <laughs> um, but uh, it started out slow, and I think it remained slow the entire time I played it. I, I can't think of any action-packed moment of that. I spent so much time inventory managing for nonsense like if i have to pick what? up another twig I, the, all right my favorite part of this game was were you fishing. depositing the stuff yes but it's just okay. my favorite part of this was the fishing so at some point if we could talk about gameplay i'd love to talk about the fishing <laughs> okay well what about the story did the story hook you at all like i said you know this it started off you know it talks about how you know you lived on this mana tree that essentially would give magic to the garden but it got like chopped down and you are still living on a grove with on this tree and but things aren't quite going right. You know, there's this play going around called the rot that essentially these ooze creatures that are consuming everything they touch. And so you take it upon yourself. You're trying to help save the grove because the people before you who used to be in charge of taking care of the grove, the guardians have all essentially disappeared and they're kind of a dying breed. So 
you are chosen as the guardian of the spring Hamlet Grove. And it's you, it's your job to kind of save everyone and unite the what's remaining of the tree. Did the story hook you at all, Aaron? No, it's it's <laughs> it's not bad. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it's it's bad. It's just it's simplistic. It's very very simple. And to me, it is. That's kind of the overall theme of this game. And I think again why there was never an element of it that got me super hooked was because the story was pretty simple. The gameplay itself is very simple, and in fact. I feel like deliberately slow and and giving you reasons to take it slow. Uh, characters are all simple, easy to look at. It's like you said, it's not even a one gig game. Like so, there's there's not a lot going on here. So story wise, again, it really didn't do much for me. You're a cute little great. So I guess that's Conquered, the name, which, name I Conquered, love. which is pretty <laughs> pretty great. And you know, you got a plum friend, which is kind of fun. It's pretty grape, uh, but. In general, uh, the story itself, I feel like, haven't we seen a hundred versions of this? So it's fine. I uh, So the story to me, actually, yes, it is very simple starting off, but I th- actually felt like it was starting to get some layers. Well, I didn't beat the game, but I looked at the ending, and I think the, interest, the ending's actually kind of interesting. See, I kind of disagree with what you said earlier about, you know, he took it upon himself. He didn't. He was in kindergarten and they took him out because people were being lazy and stupid. And what really bothered me. So like at first he does it because the original guardian needed to go somewhere. But you get to Autumn Town and these lazy big fruits, whatever they are, they start (laughs) making fun of you because you're small. And it turns out that the entire time they keep purposefully breaking the sickle that they need to progress the town. They're breaking it on purpose. And so somebody gives it back to you after you send it for repairs. And they're like, no, you can keep it because they're just going to keep breaking it. They would rather the town be completely destroyed than clean up after themselves, help themselves. At what point do you just like say, you guys don't deserve my help? I know that the towns are interconnected. So, you know, with trade routes or whatever. But at some point you have to help yourself. And so for me, like it kind of like... Really irritated me. You're telling me in real life, this this was you. You would you would eventually just say, I give up. No, but I would at least say like, oh, you're going to make fun of me for being small, but you're sitting on your butt purposefully letting the town rot. Like you're actually hurting the town. They're the ones that were responsible. Yeah. And on top of that, they're breaking the equipment that they need in order to salvage a town. So for me, I wouldn't do it for them, but I'd make sure to put them in their place instead of just like being like all smiling, being like, oh, do, 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 do. I'm going to go do everything. It's just like, so for me, I actually disliked the characters. I was like, these people don't deserve help. You didn't like any of them? Not even Maraschino? No, no. Those two in particular. Oh, okay. But all the people along the way that are sassing you and you're the only one working. If you go to the, <laughs> the beach, like you, you can go fishing. Why do I have to fish for you? You lazy turds. You you live at the beach. You do it. Let me fight the bad guys that you're too afraid to fight. But why should I have to do your fishing for you too? I always think it's funny that you complain about like a video game. Like obviously it wouldn't be much of a video game if people were doing things. But they're so <laughs> sassy about it. Don't ask for my help and be rude. And then, yeah. yeah. And so for me, it just like, it didn't make sense. Like the gameplay didn't make sense to me where it's like, they could be doing this. I, what I love about this, Liz, is... <laughs> You clearly like you. Pro- you did a much better job at this than I did. Where you where you got into the story and actually like kind of tried to connect some pieces and make some sense of it. <laughs> Me, I was just like, ah, this, you know, you start eventually just rushing through the text just because it's like, hey, I'm hearing yeah. a bunch of people whine about things and it's none of this stuff is catching <laughs> me. So you're just kind of going through it. I like that you've actually put some thought and some energy into thinking about this because to me, I was just like, ah, oh, this is just yeah, this is fine. And I'm waiting for the story to do something that didn't do anything, and I, I didn't really think much beyond that. But we should put um, an added note here, though, before you get any angry uh, tweets sent to the Game Pass grab bag uh, Twitter. Uh, when we are saying lazy fruits, we are not using a derogatory term towards <laughs> any type of people. They are literal <laughs> fruits in this game. So I just want to be clear. We're going to say fruits a lot, and we're going to yell at the fruits just to be clear, this was not meant in derogatory terms. This is simply mentioning the fruit in the game. So I'd like to apologize because Andrew cut that out, but I didn't realize that that was a term. What? So thank you for educating if me. If he's going to cut it out, you don't mention it again. 
But we, you're going to keep it in earlier that I called them fruits. Oh, right? well, yeah, but then you get my, but I cleared it up for you. And then you, yeah, and then you did. So Wait, I was so just apologizing and saying <laughs> thank you for educating me because I thought you were just being funny. No, I was like, why is, no. I thought you were being funny. I, I mean, I was being funny. I was being funny. I was making a joke because you said the lazy fruits. And so I was like, <laughs> I should add a disclaimer here that we're going to talk a lot about fruits and that specifically so she- we're talking about the, the, the fruits of the game. I also think, too, with the game, with the story, they're always like, oh, we're used to being disappointed and stuff. And it's like, you should be disappointed in yourselves. Like, it's you guys. You're the problem. You should so hate like, yourselves. Was... Idiots. Yeah, so it's like, oh, like, you guys, you didn't do this, so the town doesn't have um, enough water or whatever. And it's like, well, I'm one person and there's a bunch of people, so. Uh, you're like a really exceptionally tiny grape in this game. Yeah, like everybody is way bigger than all you. the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah. which like, well, not, not Maraschino Cherry. He's smaller than you. Yeah, but yeah. is he slaying beasts? Actually, yes, he kills the ooze uh, around your farm at night. Wow. Oh, Maraschino is the one that guards the beach. N- yeah, no, no, no. He's the one who guards your house. The bend. No, the person who guards your house is the woman at the beach that guards the beach. Yeah, that's Maraschino. Oh, I don't think she's very small. Is Maraschino a woman? Bigger. I don't know. <laughs> now, now, see, now Liz is sending me down a path. Now I'm like, wait, was Maraschino a woman the whole time? If that's the case. I don't know. This changes everything. I think maybe I thought it was a woman because I love Maraschino cherries and I'm a woman. Maybe that's where my mind went. <laughs> that is true. Maraschino cherries are kind of feminine. If you really think about it, it's like that. Which is odd because I love them too. I mean, They're delicious. They're... Come on. I could crush a whole jar of those things. We have some in the fridge. Do you just? They're so good. Do you just eat some maraschino cherries sometimes? No, I got Andrew like this cocktail making kit, and um, some of them had like the garnish. And we're like, let's be fancy tequila tonight. Tequila sunrises. Yeah, you put it in there, and you put a maraschino and cherry I don't, in it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how there's still maraschino cherries in the fridge, though. I think we forgot about them. <laughs> That's always what happens. You buy maraschino yeah. cherries for one specific reason, like you're making Sundays or something like that. And then you never remember them. And they sit in there for five years until five years later when you decide to clean out your fridge. And then you've got a whole... You, oh, all you're they're, missing is like five maraschino cherries. For me, it leaked But they're in the so fridge. good, though. That's why they I are. just remembered it the other day. I was like, oh, it leaked in the fridge. But I remember they, growing up during Thanksgiving, we would have like different like, you know, little sides for the kids. So like one of them was like black olives or like cream cheese and celery. And then my mom would buy maraschino cherries and we would just eat snack on them all day when she was cooking all these different weird foods, like black olives and maraschino cherries, you know, (laughs) what a weird combo, but oh my gosh, so good. That is a weird combo. But getting back to the story though, I will say Liz, I do agree with you. I did not really care for any of these characters. I thought, they just they just didn't go into any of their history or anything about them. They were well, just Rana. there. Was it Rana? That yeah, the kind toad. Of, yeah, he he definitely wanted to reconnect, but he also I feel like everybody there were these like rivalries where they wanted to make sure that the other people were doing worse than them. They never wanted to build each other up. They all just wanted to be better and be doing better and until they were the top. And I thought I think it's Autumn Town that they said that they're like snobs, and. They were like talking with like saying like duh dis and stuff like that. And yeah. I was like, that's not what I was expecting when you talk about hoity toity people. Well, I mean, if you think about it, it's pretty realistic. If this is real life. I mean, this is real life of that's literally how people are. They want you could be doing awful, but you just want to make sure the other people are doing worse than you. Yeah. That's how you Same make yourself like feel better. You put yourself yeah. up by taking other people down. Yeah. Yeah. Literally like any sports team. Just um, like that. What a good, <laughs> what a good analogy. Thank you. Yeah. But speaking of what's good, at least I thought the gameplay was pretty fun. I, you got, well, I, riddle me this. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so I liked it. Okay. So the combat, I agree. It's very simplistic, but I enjoyed it because I thought there was quite a bit of diverse of weapons. You know, usually you, you kind of stick with your tried and true of some of them. Yes. You're not doing some crazy maneuvers and stuff like that. No. But I thought the combat was simple and just I don't know. I enjoyed it. And like, I enjoyed the different aspects of gameplay that they're adding. I enjoyed when they were adding fishing. I enjoyed when they were adding the building aspects, the planting. I thought it was fun. Well, I didn't realize that the day didn't end until you went to sleep. Cause I always thought that like I had to complete my, like once it really got red and the super monsters came out, I thought that was like, Oh man, I need to go to bed. So for me, I felt like I didn't really get to do the things I wanted to do because I was doing 
the requests and then, you know, like trying to figure things out. And so for me, like Andrew was making fun of me because I had played a lot more days than him and he was further. <laughs> but I didn't realize that yeah. I thought that the day ended. So you're on day I was like going 38 based or on 40 that. and you're like halfway through the game. Yeah. But like I said, like I, that's how I thought it was. And I was trying to do the requests and, and same like, I do like the weapons. So like the dousing rod, the, it, but there's some, I didn't really use like the hammer, the parasol I used a little bit I like the parasol the sickle because I had to, but for me, it's a, I felt like I used the same things unless I had to get a material. So for me, like the weapons were just like, eh, because they, I wasn't really up. We, we were upgrading them, but not enough that I really saw a difference. And then same with like the cosmetics. Like if you're going to give me a backpack, let me hold more. You know, <laughs> what's the point of a backpack if you can't hold more? All right, Aaron, go ahead. No, I, all right. I, let us hear it. I, I mean, it's, it's simplistic is, I mean, you even said it. So I don't understand why like, oh, you know, it gave me new weapons. The weapons don't change all that much. It really does not add any new layer or new dynamic. And then all of a sudden you started talking about fishing and fishing is not a weapon. So that doesn't count. Uh, the, if you are a fan of old school Zelda, this is right up your alley. This is a hundred percent what it's trying to feel like. Um, so let's just say, fine, it's old school Zelda. You go out there, you swing your sword for one or two damage, unless you upgrade it, you know, whatever, that's no big deal. But that's not where it really starts to drag. And it really drags, especially at the beginning. It doesn't take until much longer. But the freaking stamina bar allows you to take uh. two swings. And then you got to <laughs> hold up until you can take some more swings. All right. I understand later on in the game, it adds a layer of, of, of some type of dynamic when you're fighting, especially in boss battles and stuff like that, to have a dash and a swing. But I'm sorry, again... That's frustrating to me, and especially at the beginning when you're just trying to move things along, those those little uh, purple uh, rot, rots, or whatever yeah. they're called, rots. They take yeah. a few hits. Like it's not like <laughs> one swing and they're dead. No, 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 no. Like you gotta you gotta hit it like six or seven times on a cooldown. Uh, very very obnoxious. Uh, it took me a while to figure out really kind of how to upgrade weapons. Upgrading weapons was. It, it helped. Obviously, it made it a lot better. But um, uh, yeah, obviously, fishing was the best element of it because I'm always a fan of kind of like in-game mini games and having to press up, down, and left when you're fishing. It's uh, absolutely pointless and stupid, and yet I still end up like, eh, you know, I kind of like doing that. Especially because <laughs> you can get it wrong and you still get it. I, well, that's I, that's the other thing. I, yeah. I, I noticed <laughs> that I liked doing the motions of it. But then I thought about it and I was like, it's not like if I, I do this, this, I get something better. I'm still I, picking I up a twig. The same thing. <laughs> and also the Zelda, he holds up his, his hands just like Zelda when he picks something up. There's a lot of, oh, it's the Zelda in here. Uh, there's one thing that I picked up on super early in this game that I still can't figure out why. Do you notice that it says like <laughs> backpack get? Yeah. When you get something, it doesn't say like got backpack. It says backpack get. Yeah. Why? <sighs> there's There's been numerous old games that did that. And I don't understand. I, I don't quite know where it originated, but I do. I've, I've noticed it in some other games. Like it's, it is kind of a, I don't know, a weird. I'm curious if it was like originally a translation error. So that was, and it's just kind of kept on as tradition. Okay, so this is probably some kind of like inside gamer joke that I just I wasn't super aware of, but I noticed it right off the bat, and I was like, "Ooh, somebody messed up there." Uh, and I thought, "Oh, maybe it's a translation." And then later on, you get a weapon, and it said the same thing, like sword get, or I think at first you get the uh, pick, pick, and it's, it's like good, pick, pick get, or something like that. And I was like, "Wait, what? They screwed up again." And I realized as I was going on, I kept doing this. And I was like, why? Why does I keep doing that? Um, that was a little bit strange. But again, not completely related to the game. I just thought kind of a, a strange <laughs> element of it. Um, and then the Stardew Valley-esque moments of it. The kind of semi-farming, semi-kind of... I, I don't know. I personally, I hated the task loops every day. Oh, really? I actually enjoyed them. I hated the task loops because I felt like I wasn't progressing. Yes, I felt like I wasn't progressing. I felt like I was just doing these tasks for some reason. It was just just driving me crazy. Um, I like the way you say, um, you say progressing. 
What did I say? Progressing? No, like you were saying progressing. I mean, I I say progressing. I've never heard someone say progressing. <laughs> okay. Did you I, didn't, I didn't know we were. <laughs> how do you say it? Are we going to call me it? out for how I say words? No, <laughs> no cuz I I sometimes say things weird, so I'm wondering wondering if I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Clearly well, you almost every episode. Clearly you're I saying think... this wrong. <laughs> Almost every episode, I feel like we're calling out of like some way someone says something. No, I really was just genuinely curious. I was like, have I been saying it wrong? I, Andrew calls me out all the time, so that's why I'm genuinely curious. How do you say it, Andrew? I say progressing. I, I would say, all right, progressing is one of those words that I think depending <laughs> on how I'm using it in a sentence, I would say progressing or progressing. Like I might delay it. And I think it's just kind of how I'll I'll say, you know how there's some words that are like that? You'll just say them differently. Like, do you yeah. say caramel or caramel? I'll say both. It just kind of depends. Even the or the. Some people say like yeah. the a lot. Some people say the. It just kind of depends. Like sometimes I just bust out a caramel. Sometimes I'm a caramel guy. Sometimes I'm yeah. a caramel guy. It just doesn't. It's... And the same thing with progressing. I think sometimes I just um, mess around with that. But thank you for calling out my speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> But what about the boss fights? Did they at least do anything for you? No, I mean, they're fine. Like, at least, I'm, I was okay that they were there. I, I, to me, it at least, to me, it gave a genuine, like, what felt like a meaningful piece of progression. And they're okay. And, you know, I, you know, a good ba- boss battle is, it, it should be a little bit challenging. And obviously, it having the dodge element adds to those fights and becomes an important part of those fights where I honestly, I don't think the dash, the dash is nearly important in almost any other part of the game, but in the boss, I, battles I, don't, I don't think I ever used it. Really? And I yeah. thought some of the boss battles, like the, I, the first one, I think I struggled the most. And then after that, they got super easy. Yeah. So for me, like I did like the name of um, the bookworm in the library. That was one <laughs> of the bosses. I thought was cute. Uh, but yeah, I thought the boss fights were very meh. I hated the, the puzzle dungeon. Because I just felt like I just like wanted to fight something. I was just like, let me just get through. Because the puzzles were like, Andrew, I didn't even know what I was doing at first. Well, they Andrew. all had a bit of a puzzle element to them. Oh, the. Uh, yeah, but I, I know which one you're talking about. You're talking about the autumn one, which yes, is the sewer. Yeah. Yes. But once you told me, I started, I, I would just automatically do it. But it would still be just irritating that I had to do it. I'm just like, let me just go through the dungeon, you know. Um, but yeah, so for me, I was very mad about them. I didn't even have to dash. See, I, I thought the dungeons were, I, I enjoyed them. I thought like the boss fights were interesting. Like, yes, I agree. I agree with what you're saying, Aaron. Like, it doesn't add too many layers to combat. And I do fully agree with you. I hated the stamina bar at the beginning. They start you off, you have two stamina, and every enemy takes usually about three or four hits. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it is frustrating, and it starts so slow. And then the little guy after, yeah. yeah. And that's why I hated it. I, I didn't like this game at the beginning either. But the more I played it, the more I thought it was fun. I enjoyed the task loops. I do agree. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm progressing that much. You're kind of leveling up the town every time you're doing the like the uh, daily tasks, which you know as you're doing that, you know you, they unlock more stuff. You can upgrade your weapons. Like it does add more progression to it. But this game does do something that is kind of annoying that I've complained about with a lot of RPGs is specifically whenever you're doing the blue tasks. Once you level that up, the rot in the area get more difficult. So it is kind of like the progress you are making and the weapons you're getting that are stronger kind of defeat the purpose you do get stronger more than the rot like it, i noticed like i had more stamina i could still take a group of them out without having to cool down at all but it was just kind of annoying where it's like yeah any big progression you're doing kind of gets set back a little bit but with the stamina like i feel like it went from zero to 100 where i was like you guys where i was like this is really annoying they only have two swings but once you showed me that when you're picking like the the picture yeah you can have so much stamina like I'm in Autumn Town, and like I don't even need that much. You have so, like 20 stamina. You've taken all the uh, <laughs> stamina perks. Yeah. So for me, you it's like so same with my health bar. It's like so for me, it's like it goes from really annoying to it kind of makes the game a little bit too easy. Yeah. I, yeah. And I mean, uh, I I do want to take a note here, Andrew. You've spent way more time agreeing with me than disagreeing <laughs> with me on this. So I think it's a little bit funny and a little bit suspect that you gave this a game. When I gave it a hard pass. Um, But I digress here. Uh, Yes, I agree. That progression should feel like progression. So if I'm going to get stronger, I should be 
feeling stronger in a game. By constantly matching enemies to constantly match me where I'm at is frustrating. I think maybe that should be gradual, that maybe things should be easy. You hit a wall, then they're easy. You hit a wall, then they're easy. There's probably a way to make sure you still feel like those gains are meaningful and they show up. And, and I agree, this, this game, the only thing that truly changes is the I had is is the uh, stamina. You're you're right. You're totally right. If you get your stamina way up, stamina is not even something you think about because you can absolutely run through this and run through a lot of fights there, and it regains faster than you're losing it. So, sure. Um, but that's why I even go back and say like the weapons don't even like I I wouldn't say any of the weapons were were totally crazy. Um, they're just fine. I wanted to ask, so when you go back to other areas, is it still like the, all the enemies are harder? Because that would be another way to kind of show your strength as well because there's a lot of back and forth. So like there's someone at the beach that needs, I think it's called Pith Root or something. Yep. And so you obviously have to go back there. So when you go back, are the enemies weaker or is it, like you said earlier, across the I board? didn't notice me rolling the enemies. Like, the, like there was still, I don't know, I felt like they were the same difficulty as before. So... That's why I do agree with Aaron of, I didn't notice anything crazy. I wasn't one hit every enemy and kind of thing, but I could still take them out with no problem. And it was just kind of, it was just like, I don't know, I could still take them out, just no issue. I also want to point out too, because you were making fun of me earlier because I didn't realize that the the days um, didn't end and how I was really like spending way too many days of the game. I found something that you didn't. What? So that hidden frog statue. Oh, I found pictures. Him. Yeah, because I told you. No, you just because, told me. No, you, so you, you looked at my screen and they, oh, I don't have that one. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's in the forest. And like, if you go up, there's like a hidden passage. No, you just said it's in, he's in the spring area. No, I, I did not. I told you exactly where he was. <laughs> and you can't even graciously admit that I helped you. Thank you. Thank um, you. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, point that out, that you uh, needed my help for something. But I will say, so uh, the progression I felt, like this game has a bit of like Metroidvania elements to it with the fishing and then the gardening. Because yeah, when you start into the spring area, you know, all you can really do is just harvest minerals, basically mine wood and stone. But then you get the fishing rod, you go back to it, then you can do a whole bunch of fishing. And then eventually you get the planting and then you can do a whole bunch of planting. So I felt like there was a bit of Metroidvania elements of going back to certain areas that you've been to. But now you have these other mechanics to kind of help improve things. But do you really want to spend that much time doing the same tasks in the same place? Like For, for me, what? It's like, for what gain? That's, that's yeah. also going back and doing the same things you were doing before. Upgrading your weapons. Yes, but it's not. It just is not a significant move enough to make it even all that worth it. And the planting, I feel like, isn't very fun. Where you just like, there's like this one area that you hit, you put a seed down. Are you changing yours to a pass now, Liz? I feel like you've gotten more negative for this. No, game. you no, have no, too, I... Andrew. <laughs> no, I've agreed with you, but like, where some I'm like, yeah, you know that that's not a great element. You're like, this is the worst. Like yours is like a ten of hate for me. I'm like, eh, that's like a two annoyance. Like, eh. I do find it weird, like how much you like this game. I found the story actually engaging. I actually, I want to know what happened in the end. Uh, cause, so I want to ask you, but it's a spoiler. Can you give me like a non-spoiler like thing that happens <laughs> that's exciting? Well, I could cut it out. I actually don't. That's a more nuanced ending than I expected. So it gets a, yeah. it gets a little bit of props on that. That's a little bit more nuanced than just like. Defeat oh, the rock. Now he's oh, he's <laughs> positive and I'm negative. I mean, I'm no, just... I just find it funny that it turned that like now like I'm the one that's like oh that ending sucks. Well, because if you if you play out this in kids movies or if you play this out in other video games with the similar type of story where you're, oh there's only a few guardians left you gotta save us from this whatever gobbledygook is attacking us whatever it is because that's that's done a thousand times. It ends with you defeating the villains and everybody lives happily ever and after. That's 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 the ending. So what you're saying is that this ending is more than that. It's got yeah. it's got actually a thought out process of like, no, there's there's something else happening there. I don't want to. If you're saving any of this, I don't want to spoil. But that. I mean, why wouldn't you want the happy ending? Like if you look at the world. Oh, yeah, that's right, Liz. Does no, not if you like a look, game. if you look at the world. And all the crap that happens that you have to deal with day to day, wouldn't you want happiness in an ending with movies, TV shows, books? There's so much evil 
and sadness in the world. Give me a good flipping ending. Like, I don't have time for that nonsense. You know like, what? for me, it's like, yeah, it's really easy to come up with evil, morbid, sick, twisted things. <laughs> like, you see in, like, all kinds of movies and stuff. It's so easy. But to come up with, like, a really intricate, like, thought-provoking good ending, it's like, oh, no, it's a good ending. It, it means it sucks. Like, no. I look at it more this way. It's an acceptance of one's humanity. That for good to exist in this world, evil has to exist as well. And those no, two things... No, they're exactly. all good. No, it's impossible. Good doesn't exist if evil doesn't exist. It's a, it's a paradox. You have to have evil for good to exist. If good is the only thing that exists, then it's not actually good anymore. It's a paradox. You, you have, have to have light this. without darkness. So, okay, can, they, can we be 99% good? Like, so, I... The, so, you know? So... <laughs> I think ultimately that ending is kind of accepting of your humanity and understanding that living forever or living in complete peace and prosperity is actually worse. Yeah. It's beautiful, actually. Well, thanks. Look at this, Aaron. I mean, the garden people... story is beautiful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, but the, these people don't deserve prosperity. <laughs> okay. You, <laughs> okay like first of all like let's 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 be honest like once he once the guardian that's helping them either leaves or dies they're done for like they don't want to work for themselves they don't want you if you're not going to work you're not going to reap the benefits those stupid so for fruits. me it's like i don't even understand <laughs> i don't understand like with this game like what happens when um like, if everything's all right in the end, they're just going to go back to their old habits because they never learned right versus wrong. They never learned, you know, that they need to look after themselves. And so what's that saying? Like, if you give a man a, a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, these people aren't going to be fishing after. They just want him to give them the fish. It's a good oh, point. Oh, that ending got me sassy. No. <laughs> One more thing with gameplay. I love that when you run, your face like squeezes up, like you're really <laughs> straining. Did you guys notice that? I don't think I've. I don't think so I've. So I had that. really high. <laughs> yeah, like you like scrunch up your face, like you're straining, and, you and you're just like, "Oh, running. grape! I feel you! I feel you, grape!" <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you have this like I I feel like the character is really cute, and he's always got a smile on his face no matter what. And oh, right, your character is adorable because so I like this game has cosmetics as well. Which, well, I like and don't like because I feel like, yeah, so you do earn money in this game and there isn't enough things to buy. So they're like, well, we got to throw things for you to buy things. It's cosmetics. I will say that the cosmetics are actually kind of adorable. And you can buy rocks too. <laughs> yeah. They were that desperate. They're like, you want to buy a rock? <laughs> I, I, don't get me wrong. I don't think anybody here is saying this game isn't adorable. Well, this game is obviously adorable. I, I mean, you're a great name Concord. I mean, that's just precious okay and, and you got a good friend named maraschino i mean this is just this the is elder is called elderberry yes elderberry <laughs> like that is just come on now that's great um <laughs> but no i did not know uh, he scrunched his face together um that's i guess kind of cool i i like liz notice it though yeah because i i you told me oh you know you can run right and i'm like yeah andrew i know and then i started running <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, i would duh i would run every once in a while but i never thought to do it like when i'm like running around town just like when i'm running away from enemies I'm like oh yeah i can just make this go faster <laughs> that's why why you're on day like 40 yeah for the game you, you didn't tell it to me today <laughs> uh but yeah i think art style wise i think this game is really awesome i the towns like i i like that the towns are split into seasons as well you know you start in spring the next you go to summer bar then after that you go to autumn so Autumn Falls or Autumn Town, Autumn Town, and then Winter Glade. So I like that it kind of progresses through these seasons. It also made me like want to be like for so for me it's like with um like Winter Glade it's just like I I want to be in the woods and there's like a little bit of snow like I was feeling that vibe for every season. So for me like I think they did a good job. I was a little sparse. I I feel like just like a little bit, um yeah. which I don't think I I didn't get to Winter Glade. No, I'm like right about to enter it. Yeah, I'm at Autumn Town. Um, but yeah, so I, I did like that they, they had a different vibe for each area. Yeah. I Season. Graphic wise, I thought this looked great. Uh, well, yeah, okay. I'll say it looks great. For, for an indie developer, this looks like it was 
not hand drawn, but not that far off. Uh, the towns were really detailed looking, so that could have looked a whole lot more boring. Um, but it looked like they actually put some attention and care into that look. Again, not to reference back to it, but I think a semi similar art style to Stardew Valley. So if if you you like the look of that game, I would say that this kind of falls into a, a little bit of a similar category to that. Maybe a little bit more pastel colored, or like water colored yeah. more. Um, well, Stardew is a lot more pixelated. This isn't that pixelated. I guess that's a good point. This I wouldn't say is pixelated. I would say this is definitely more of an art style. But um, I wish. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. I wish that they had kind of highlighted a bit more where the entrances and exits were, mm-hmm. especially that was in my Autumn complaint. Town, because yeah. they highlighted a lot. Like you knew where to fish. You like there's some things like I think like of the pith roots or something. There's there was something that sparkled that you needed to get. But there were some times where I was like, I'm trying to find my way back to my house, and I'm like, especially in Autumn Town, it's it's really bad. I feel. Oh, like. my issue was in summer in Summer Bar. I had a hard time figuring out what were ramps and what weren't. Oh yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. And you, sometimes you would just like plop down and be like, "Oh yeah, I yeah." Oh, that, that was a ledge yeah. I can jump down. Apparently, yeah. So for me, like that's something that I think that they could have done a, a, a little bit better. I thought, but like you said, I at least thought the characters were adorable. I love that they went, you know, generally with the fruit and vegetable names for everyone. Not always the case for everyone, but I do think it's odd that they went for fruit and vegetables, but then you also have these frog people, which I thought that was kind of weird. But what's Woody? Uh, yeah, I, I'm guessing like um, this type of fish called uh, uh, a wood, wood skipper. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's so I'm probably... assuming that's what he is. Yeah. So, something like that. I, I don't know if it was a tadpole or something like that, but... Um, I thought it was a fish, which is also odd. Why is literally he the only fish? <laughs> I, yeah, the, the frog thing kind of threw me off a little bit because very early on I was like, oh, okay, this is just fruit-based. And then all of a sudden there's a frog involved in this. And I was like, all right, so maybe it's got a little bit of everything. But no, pretty much consistently outside of a few frogs and I guess a fish, it's still a lot of fruit and some vegetables. vegetables. There was vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Which ones? Uh, There was mushrooms. There was um, a turnip was the guardian, the guard at uh, Autumn Town. Um, But what about music? Did music do anything for you? No, I think I liked it. I think if <laughs> if I remember, I think like the music and sound effects stuff. I think it fit the game, but for the life of me, I can't remember it. I, I I will say it is pretty forgettable. It's very relaxing music, but yeah, this is definitely a game you don't need a headset oh. for since nothing is voice acted. Like, do you think you think you would have cared the story about the story more, Aaron, if it was voice acted? Ah, uh, it's great that you say that because about halfway through my playtime, that's exactly what I thought. Is I realized reading this text, this pointless text, nothing, nothing of what anybody was saying was super interesting, or maybe go okay, give me a little bit more of that. Like you mentioned, the characters are all pretty. I mean, for I mean, I'm not being cute here but they're two-dimensional they're, there's really no backstory to them there's no there's very little direction for them there's very little uh end game or goals for them so it's it's a whole lot of eh. but yeah if this was voice acted i would at least be a little bit more engaged in those conversations sure some are too long i definitely oh, there yeah. are some that even i was like clicking through like just like reading it as fast as i could and it was just like paragraphs i'm like this is a bit unnecessary but i also want to say like at the beginning the intro music the first time i booted it up i the first day that i played it out i was a little cranky <laughs> and i left it on like for a second when i went to the room and i'm just like that needs to shut up <laughs> and i was like oh liz you're feisty today <laughs> and then i was like and then i realized that and i was like okay let's let's start over but um but yeah so i definitely wouldn't play it when <laughs> i was cranky <laughs> See, I, I don't know. I, I do agree. I think voice acting would be better. I didn't think the texts were too long because there isn't too much text going on. You're not going through these, like, you're not getting a cutscene like every other day. Like, for the most part, the actual talk, like, talking dialogue segments were pretty far and few between. You could talk to random citizens, but they did not have anything interesting to say at all. So you didn't have to waste your time with it. But one thing, I did remember another thing that actually did annoy me. Um, this kind of goes into also for playing this game with X cloud. I don't think I recommend it. So this game only saves when you sleep for the day. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So you could be going through a day, going through text and dialogue. And as Liz said, the day does not end until you sleep. So you could keep playing and the after dark when it's dark out, enemies are harder, but you can still keep going and playing. And the game only stays if you sleep. Now with that same token though, you also can't go to bed early, which is, that's also, that's really annoying to me. Like, cause there was a couple of oh, yeah. times where I'm like, oh, you know, I did my daily tasks. I'll just go to bed and just get more tasks tomorrow and just kind of finish it. No, your character's not sleepy enough. And it's just like, like that's, this is how I save. You're literally telling me I can't save then. So that was kind of annoying. You can sit on a bench and it speeds up time, but it's just, well, just let me sleep. At the beginning when you can only have a certain amount of items that you pick up, I think it's like 15, you can expand it later on. But if you have that maxed out and you did your, your requests and stuff, it's like, yeah, you want to go to sleep. Yeah. So yeah, you can't, you're not tired enough. And it's just, yeah. that's, that was, that was a poor design. So if you're playing the next cloud, like it's not a good idea of, like, hey, you need to stop playing this game now. And it's like, well, I can't save. Or there you go. You just lost your day. Hmm. Interesting. It sounds like Anders adding more and more to the negative <laughs> list here. He just okay. keeps finding You've new reasons. You've convinced me. You convinced me to bring my score down a little bit. To me, oh, this is still a game, though. Okay? I was just going to ask that. I will say, my score is a little bit lower. You do make some good points. But this still is a game to me. I still enjoyed my time with Garden Story. But I bet that you like the achievements. Yeah, the achievements are very solid in this game. It's I would say overall this is a achievement hunter game. So uh, I got 310 with 7 out of 21 and I oh, I forgot to look how many hours I put into it. But but that's not bad. I, I but I also didn't see them popping up and I don't know why. Maybe something with my Xbox or something, but I like in a game when I'm actually getting them. I think only like two came up that I saw. So that kind of keeps me going more as well if a yeah. game like has like you know, achievements popping up every once in a while. I think I was at 450 and I have eight hours of gameplay Uh, for time to beat. You're looking between 10 to 15 hours. So it's not a terribly long game and all the achievements are very obtainable. I don't think any of them are missable. You just get a lot of them just from story progression. There's a handful of killing X amount of acorn enemies, X amount of big gloop enemies. So like to me, yeah, I think this is a, a decent achievement hunter game. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a, I'm a bad person to ask on that front. I don't I don't think I've ever... I mean, maybe when you and I first had an Xbox and achievements first came out, I think it's the only time I ever kind of cared about achievements. Um, you, I think, have always cared about them. I couldn't, even yes, t- I, I, <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what my gamer score is right now. Like, I have no clue. And there's probably multiple games, like... I'm probably your, the, the best and worst type of person you can have on this podcast because uh, in one sense, I can be blunt and absolutely destroy this game. But in another sense, <laughs> um, I don't play a lot outside of like Call of Duty and Battlefield. Like those are just the things I want to do when I'm, I'm sitting around at night. Um, so I have no clue what my gamer score is in this. I don't think I ever pulled up the gamer score to see what was on there, what I what I should be doing. Um <laughs> Because I, it's just the least that I'm, I'm concerned about. I feel like you're like the exact equivalent of Keith. Oh, him with his roguelikes. <laughs> yeah, he only wants to play roguelikes. So. Yeah, but you know what this is, and and I uh, just this game in general. And Andrew, you mentioned it at the very beginning of this. You said that this has a really, at least, good reviews or probably somewhat of a big following on Nintendo Switch. Within the first 15 minutes of me playing this game, I said this game was made for Nintendo Switch. This game was made to be played on just a handheld device for simplicity's sake. Because that's what this thing is. Um, And I I could see myself enjoying this a whole lot more if I was just laying in bed with a Switch in my hand just playing through this game a bit. Um, I just... It did not do it. It did not connect with me in that same sense. This was no battlefield for me. <laughs> See, I, te- I saw the trailer for this, and I actually brought it up to Andrew because Andrew and I were moving this week, and we needed something really easy and something that you know we probably couldn't put a lot of hours into this week, but we still wanted to put an episode out there. And so I saw this, and I showed it to Andrew, and he'd already seen it. I was like, maybe we should do this. I thought I was going to like it more because I, I like so many different genres and video games like i but i like stardew valley i like stuff like that so for me i thought i would like it more i thought it was gonna be like stardew valley yeah i just i just thought i looking at the trailer i just thought there'd be more to it i guess yeah what age group do you think you'd recommend this game for 
Like, do you think this was more geared for younger audience? No. Kind of, yes and no. I, I think this is probably geared... Man, you know what's weird is it's kind of like I mentioned, there's so many nods to Zelda in this game that it clearly wants people that like the original Zeldas to go back and play this. But it's almost too cutesy to feel like it would connect with anybody in that that demographic. So it's, this, it's really strange. I actually don't know where I would put this. Mark, I, what do you think, Andrew? I could see young teens. I, I feel like this would connect pretty well. Oh, because you could dab. Because you, yep. could, you could do you floss. No, you couldn't. You, you got some sweet oh. dances. You could do the <laughs> floss like emotes. <laughs> like, let's, wait, what? I missed this mechanic. How do you dab? <laughs> She's scouring back there, hitting every button. I have never once tried to dab or floss. Well, I, don't, I don't need to embarrass myself. Well, I hear it's a thing the teens love. So uh, <laughs> I've I've played the Fortnites before, and on that game, you can do that stuff. So um, I'm assuming you can do that in this game if the teens like it. Yeah, so Andrew, you just looked up Metacritic for Switch, which is 73 and 7.5. It's still TBD on Xbox. I know I'm getting ahead, but um, I'm kind of surprised because you said there was like a cult following, right? Yeah, that's, I heard this was a, a, a pretty popular game on Switch. But uh, let's get into our final thoughts here. Aaron, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell the people? I'm really excited about yours. You, you wrap <laughs> up. Listen, I've, I've already blasted this game, and I just want to be clear again. This is, this is a game that's not for me. And you've probably heard us describe some elements to this game that you said, hey, that's right up my alley. I love Zelda. I love simplistic, um, but semi. it's got semi-deeper elements to it. Like, there are other things to do rather than just hacking and slashing. There's obviously more to it than that. So, you know, maybe that's going to appeal to you. Maybe you're somebody who just wants something that's a little bit more relaxed and chilled. Maybe you don't like playing a game that's super fast-paced, that you die a lot in, and, and it's just, that's not enjoyable for you. You want something that's just cute to look at, easy to sit back and play, and truly it's frustrating elements aren't like destroying it like i like i said i could tell when i played it i knew this wasn't for me but i knew that this was probably for somebody else so um this is for somebody out there um it's just in my opinion this is made for a handheld this is made for switch this looks like it is tailor made for nintendo switch you know in fact so my my kids, I've got a, uh, for anyone that's listening, I've got a, a four-year-old and I've got a nine-year-old. And so I downloaded a bunch of games on their Xbox and we were playing, um, we were playing the Pixar Rush game. And I was playing it the other day and I thought, man, this feels really weird. Why does this feel so weird? And I for- totally forgot. This was a, uh, a, um... What what was the name of that thing? The the AR system on it. The what did they use? Um, what thing? What did they use to sell with the Xbox One? The camera. Oh, the Connect. The Connect. I forgot that was a Connect game. So what they oh, had what? to do is they had to convert it to controller, but it was a Connect game initially, so it didn't feel huh. right on a controller. That's kind of what this game felt like to me. It felt like when I was playing it. I shouldn't be playing this on an Xbox. And maybe that's just me and kind of a closed off. I only play a certain segment of games most of the time, but um, <laughs> it, it's just, it's a totally fine game that somebody's going to like out there. Um, unless you like good games. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to give it a score? I, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a 5.6 because again, if I'm going out of 10, out of 10, what do you normally mm-hmm. scale things on here? Out of hundred. So, so, okay, so 56. So I'm going to give it a 56. And again, the reason why I'm going to do that is because to me, if I'm going to say it's not for me, but it could be for somebody, I got to be as close to the middle as possible. I think a 56 is fair. <laughs> uh, you, you did remind me of, of a question I wanted to ask. Uh, did you guys die at all? Yes. Yeah, I took no. some of your coins, which I actually tried to switch it to you can't die because it was taking my money. Oh, so you can't and die you mode? Can't, no, it wouldn't let me switch to it. Why? What would it say? I don't know if it's because it was mid-game or maybe I read it wrong. It's, like I thought it said that uh, the, it was a no-die mode. 
but it wouldn't let me switch. Like I went back into it and it showed like it would er it was a race. It oh. wouldn't let me do it. So, but like I said, I could have read it wrong, but I thought that's what it meant. So, Aaron, you, you convinced me. I, Woo! I'm taking a couple points off this game. This is still a game for me. I still had a ton of fun with it. You know, I understand where you're coming from, the things you didn't like about it. Yes, some of the combat is tedious. I still enjoyed I thought the story, to me, was actually more engaging than I thought it was going to be. I do I do agree. I think the beginning is very slow, but I felt like the more I kept playing it, the more I was enjoying it. And I love that this game kind of kept dripping new mechanics. And so, you know, I was having fun. I think this game is great for a younger audience. You know, it's, it is adorable, but you know, I, I enjoyed, I thought the weapons were fun. You know, the, the boss fights were interesting. The dungeons, I wish there was more dungeons. I will say that, Yeah. you know, but instead of, you only got one in each town, instead of daily tasks, give me more dungeons. Yeah. But I mean, overall though, I, I thought it was a solid experience. You know, it's, it's relaxing. It is very simple. So that's one thing that was nice. This wasn't something that was infuriating or frustrating. I think I died once. Uh, I, cause I screwed up. I got stuck in a corner or something like that. It was kind of a dumb move, but yeah, it's not really punishing when you die. So yeah, it's just, it was a relaxing time for me. I'll give it an 80. So I'm going to give it a 75. I was talked down as well. I originally went in thinking, <laughs> wow, maybe, way to go, Aaron. The, I, was, I originally went in maybe thinking 80. I, and then I love that. Maybe, I am the guest and I just <laughs> totally destroyed your guys' stance. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm not Keith. I'm not just going to be a pushover here. I'm coming in with fire. But yeah. So for me, like I originally was coming in thinking maybe you're on 80 because I thought it was kind of slow. And then you gave it an 80 and you definitely liked it way more than I did. <laughs> But I think 75 is a good average score. I already did Metacritic, um, which was 73 and 7.5 on Switch. But Yeah. So I think that's going to do it for us. Thank you all so much for joining us for Garden Story. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Please yeah, thanks. tell everyone, where can, where can they find you? Uh, I am the co-host of the Real Movie Talk podcast. That's R-E-E-L. Um, it is far less successful than this one and we've been doing it for far longer. Uh, but if you also enjoy movies and you like movie news, uh, go ahead and check us out. Uh, we release every Friday. Wait, so can you tell us a movie that everyone should watch? Uh, yes. Everything. So they, uh, what? I was just going to say, so they know what kind of movies that you like, you know? Oh my gosh. Um, well, see my co-host Chaz, we, we're both. Two different guys, so we kind of come at movies. We're similar, but we also come at movies from from a different approach. Um, so we we we've, we've both kind of got a, a, a different mindset. Um, uh, Andrew and I saw Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's probably still my favorite movie of the year. That movie so was far. fantastic. Um, I did not like the last Thor film. If you listen to our last episode, you'll hear us blast that one a little bit because um, we were both not fans of that movie at all. I'm looking forward to seeing Nope. Nope is coming out. Um, so hopefully we can talk a little bit about that movie. So I'm very excited and have high hopes for that one as well. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us. Thanks for If you for have any me. game suggestions, please email us at gamepassgrabbing at gmail.com. We're at Facebook at GBGBpod and Twitter GBGBpod. Do you have any social medias, Aaron, that you want to plug for your real movie talk? Uh, just the Instagram. I've, I fired that bad boy back up again. So it's just real movie talk pod. We also have a Facebook um, I'm too old for Twitter, and this is probably why we don't get the the same type of traffic because we do very little advertising on that front. But again, we've been doing it since 2017. But just, and we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and that's about it. And I'm Liz Noob, gamer tag comment on Dean, and I'm on Twitter at Liz Noob Noob is EW. Thank you all for joining us. We love you all. We'll see you again next week. See you. Bye, guys. Thank you.